welcome back to the Global DNA Series 4. Today's title is Full Spectrum Water, Keys to Optimal Health and Self-Realization. And today we're, are, we are joined with Randy Hatton, and Randy's passion is working with water, integrating ancient wisdom with advanced earth-based technologies to optimize its natural vitality. He is a steward who brings in information, bridging the world of science and spirituality, thus supporting us to raise our consciousness and connection to the spirit of water. His goal is to support all life that depends on clean, healthy water to thrive and assisting Gaia in her transformation. Over the past 20 years, Randy has studied the properties of water, principles of sacred geometry, the effects of frequency-induced technologies. He has discovered the combination vortex or toroidal motion, hydrogen, oxygen, liquid carbon, mag magnetism, sound frequencies, light spectrums, radionic scalar waves, and rare earth elements, cosmic energy tools, along with the intentions of love and respect to water, can transform all water to its pristine state. Thank you for joining us, Randy. It's such a pleasure to have you, dear brother, Randy. <laughs> well, thank you, Sister Kurda. Yes, it's an honor. It's an honor. Uh, I have been, uh, over the last couple of years, my guides have said, okay, you know, you've been, you've been following guidance and learning and discovering over, you know, 20, 20, over 20 years. And and now it's time to share it with the world. It's time to share what has come through me with the world. Absolutely. And I have been one of those people who have seen what you're doing in the world, who have participated in some of your uh, online community with your, your water purification. Um, and it is, it is really spectacular and incredible. So let's start with some of the basic stuff, like how you really got into really working with water and when you, when was the, that point when you were like, water is it for me? Right. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> well, I was pretty much born and raised on the water. I was a commercial fisherman. So I, uh, by the time I was in my early 20s, I was on the ocean roughly nine, 10 months a year uh, in the Bering Sea, uh, doing what's known as the deadliest catch. And so all of these years of being on the water, I never realized it, but I was, I was spiritually connecting to the water. And so then in about, uh, it was 1997, 96, a couple of spiritual teachers showed up in my life. My grandmother falling leaves Crowfoot and another woman named Celia Nelson, who was a Kunandera from Mexico. And they really rocked my world in a really beautiful, powerful way. And um, it, it was, I think pretty much, I wouldn't agree to come back into, into body uh, if it wasn't for them to show up in my life. And I wouldn't be here right now today talking with you. That's for sure. That, that's for sure. They were a huge role. So what started this world of water more on a spiritual level for me was, um, my girlfriend, Sheila, at the time, brought home a VHS tape. This was in about 1998. And this VHS tape was about a man named Johan Grander and the Grander water technology. And I watched this, and they, they were showing this different research that they had done with this Grander water filtration system. <clears throat> and most people have said, oh, that's snake oil. That's not real. That can't be. That's just, like, too magical, too you know, do woo woo. And, but there was a part of me that said, no, no, I need to look into this. And I was, I, I wanted to buy one. That little kid in me said, let's buy this and cut it in half and see what's inside of this thing, how it works. So I went to go buy one. And the guy, the guy says, uh, uh, you know, they're $1,800. And I told him what I was going to do. He said, oh, if you're going to do that, you don't, don't buy one and cut it in half. I'll tell you what's in it. And I said, okay, well, what's in there? And he shakes it. He shakes the, it's about a, uh, it's about this wide, four by four, and about, about a foot, foot and a half tall. It's all made of stainless steel. And he shakes it, and I hear water. And I'm like, wow, water? And I says, how's this working? He said, well, Johann Grander found this special water in a cave in Austria. And he discovered it had all these healing properties to it. 
To this day, I'm pretty sure I know what this water is. It's known as primary water. It's Mother Earth's backup water supply. And so he discovered he could take this special water and he could put it in like a, a copper jacket inside of this filter and all the other water that ran by it would receive the informational fields or the frequencies from this water in this jacket. And I said, well, that's it. That's all this is some special water and it's receiving the frequency, the energy as other water runs through the filter. And he says, yeah, there's some magnets in here too. He said, there's some magnets. And he says, it does put the water into a little bit of a twist. A little bit of a twist happens when it goes through it. And so I go home really like, wow, wow. If water is this sensitive, what if you do this? What if you do this? I mean, my, my mind just started taking off on all these different directions. And because that my spiritual teachers right in the beginning told me a lot of things of the importance of me uh, learning to meditate, right? And the one, the Kunandero from Mexico said, son, you know, it's really important that you remember what you did in Atlantis. And I, and I said, Atlantis? I hadn't even heard of Atlantis 26 years ago. I had never even heard of the term Atlantis. I said, what are you talking about, Atlantis? And she says, yeah, you were a, you were a top scientist in Atlantis. And I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? No, I'm a fisherman. I, I'm no scientist. And she says, no, son, no, no. I'm not talking about this lifetime. This was like 26,000 years ago. And I'm still just kind of scratching my head. But anyways, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, scientist, Atlantis. And <laughs> anyways, so, but I do start meditating. And this is around the time, you know, Sheila brought home this video. And so I started getting downloads. I literally started getting down things and I went down this rabbit hole that was just took me like swept me off my feet and down the rabbit hole I went and I am working till two three in the morning out in the garage <laughs> my girlfriend's like man you ever gonna come to bed I'm like <laughs> I mean I was like I was not interested in sleeping I was like no there's something really important about all this and so I remember as a boy I remember how fascinated I was I grew up out of nature and I was very fascinated um, with water in particular I had this little stream that I played in all the time as a little boy and the spiraling of water the spinning of water the dance the dance that water does I would just hang out by that little stream a lot and um, I know now why more but and I was also fascinated as a little boy when the when the bathtub would run all the way out i would sit in the bathtub till the water ran all the way out because i was fascinated with that last part of the vortex going down the drain creating that vortex and my mom's like what are you still doing in there randy and i'm like well i like playing with this little thing that happens at the end of the bath this little vortex so these ideas started coming through me if water is a sensitive what if you put water into a vortex what if you combine you know, he, he said there was magnets in this filter. So I got ideas of like, oh, what about this, this free flowing vortex? Cause I came across um, that little toy called the toroidal tube, I think it's called the little toroidal tube or something like that. It's a toy that kids play with, two pop bottles screw together and it creates this free flowing centripetal inline vortex. So, I realize this now, it was my guide speaking with me, but I thought it was just my mind, but my guide basically said, go get one of those toys, glue some magnets on the side of it, right, onto that little coupler piece in the middle, and try to look into, you know, it, I just got that, get the toy, get some magnets, do that. So I do this, I make a few of them, I take them on to my, my teacher grandmother falling leaves, and I said, play with this grandmother for a while, you know, and see what you, if you find anything. And I gave one to, to Celia, um, grandmother Celia. And I come back a week later and I to grandmother Celia and I said, grandmother, you find anything out? And she says, yeah, son, actually pretty, pretty amazing when I found out. I said, what? She said, my guides told me to draw a bath. She lived in Everett, Washington in the city to draw a bath spin up a batch of water 
and then add that water to the bath. And this is a two liter bottle of water. And so she said, as soon as I added that water to the bath, I could instantly see the energy and all of the water in the bath shift within just a minute or two. And she said, I'm like, you sure? I said, yes, and I know what I saw. I have, you know, I can see these things. And it was, it changed the water, all the water in my bath. Then she said, I also noticed this. She said, watch. She fills up a, a glass of tap water with a glass. And then she takes an, another um, water that had been vortex and magnetized. And then she pours it, that came from the tap, actually no filter, just right from the tap, pours it in another glass and sets it on the table. And then has me, after it's set there a few minutes, has me come over and she says, now come over and look at the water. And I'm looking at the water and I'm like, yeah, okay, what, what am I supposed to see here? And she says, well, I can clearly see this. This water that we vortex is continually stays moving. It's moving. The water from the tap, no movement at all. And this happens even hours and hours afterwards. And I don't even, days even possibly. She said, I, I, so it's clearly, it's like it's alive. It's like come alive. And again, I'm looking at the water and I can't see no difference. I'm like, Grandma, I can't see this. So I then go to Grandmother Fallingly. I say, what are you, what did, what did you find, anything? She says, well, yeah, the first time, because I had guided both of them, this needs to be done four times because I heard through guidance, it needs to be spun four times. So she said, the first time you spin it, the energy comes off of the bottle Oh, about a couple inches. Then you spin it again and it creates a ring and the energy goes out to about four, four to five. You spin it again, it goes out another few inches. Another ring creates another ring. And then actually after the fourth time, it doesn't go any farther. I tried, I spin it five, six, and it pretty much stays out around about a foot to a foot and a half off of the bottle. And the rings, you can feel it's actually warm and then cool in between the rings and the next ring. And so I decided, oh, I'll try it. So I put my hands up to the bottle and I can actually feel this, what she's describing of this warmth and cool. So that was pretty, that was exciting to me because I could actually feel, you know, feel something here. And, <laughs> and then she says, another thing, Randy, I, I, I realize about this. You can direct the energy of this vortex to somebody like a prayer. It amplifies a prayer tremendously. You say the person's name and you say what, it, what you want the vortex to do for the person. Like to say they have a liver condition. So you direct the energy of the vortex to the person and to their liver. And then she says, also I discovered you can send this energy through the veil to the spirit world. So I was like, wow, you know, this was all kind of new to me. This whole spiritual stuff was new to me and all of it, you know, so I'm kind of scratching my head. I'm like, I know them well enough. You know, I mean, I, I, I've known them well enough. They wouldn't lie to me. There's no reason for them to lie to me about this. Right. So, so I, I, I quite, I, I, but I needed more. I needed some kind of science. I needed something more that was more of what I would say hard science to really feel that the universe had brought me something special, right? And so at this point, I was guided to a place in Seattle, Washington called BEST, Bioenergetic Screening Team. And in this place, they have several different doctors. One of them, her name was Patricia. And Patricia tests people with what's known as an electrodermal device, right? And so I go in there with a two liter plastic bottle of water that I had vortex magnetized up. And I just wanted to do like a before and after test. We'll see what's happened before I drink the water and what happens after. And so I go in there and her name was Patricia. And Patricia, we sit down and I have this water sitting about oh, six feet away from me. And one of the grandmothers actually said she could feel the field, Lily. She could feel it clearly with her hands, but it went out to 10, 10 to 12 feet. If you took a set of dowsing rods after it was done, you could, you could pick up that field actually went out 10, 12 feet. 
And so I told Patricia, I said, Patricia, I think, you know, maybe we should move the water a little farther away from me, just in case, because one of my friends said it actually radiates the field somewhere around 10, 12 feet. And so she walks out of the room and comes in with a set of dowsing rods and she walks away, four feet away from the water, the rods swing out. She walks another four feet, the rods swing out again. She walks another four feet out, she's right at the door of the office and the rods just slowly move out. She's like, wow, yeah, you got, you got 12 feet. So she literally takes the water out of the office, puts it in some other room. We sit down and do 12 tests on me. And these tests were basically, uh, she measured just the basics of like heavy metals in my body, uh, some of my organs, what level they were working at. And anyway, so she then, uh, it, she does the 12 tests. She then goes, gets the water. She brings it in. I go to drink some. She's no, you don't even need to drink it. Just, just hold it between your legs. So, okay. So I hold it between my legs. She does the same exact 12 tests and she looks over at me with her eyes really big. And is like, wow, where did you get this water? I said, I made it in my garage. And I'm not really telling people right now, but I made it in my garage. And she says, wow, she, she pulls, she prints out this computer printout and she shows me, this is where you were on metals. Your lungs had some issues. You know, she said, basically, what you want is to hit 50. 50 is where you want when, when, when I do the test. And she has, it's actually like a pin, a pin that has a piece of a wire that goes into the computer. And she holds you in these different meridians in your fingers. She would push on that meridian, hold it. The little barcode goes across the screen, kind of boom, and then locks in wherever, wherever you're at. And she says, this is what happened. You had, you had like 90, you know, or like 89, 90 on your metals in your body. Your lungs are like 43. you got some conditions. Uh, you got some parasites going on. Uh, you know, I had some in the thirties, forties, some were, were actually close to 50, but she says, this is what happened when you held that water. And she showed me the second test. It brought me literally from this 89 mercury level down to like 52. It brought these ones that were low up to close to 50 and she was like you know this is what i do for a living this is what i do i create uh forms of homeopathic remedies information and water to find out where people are out of homeostasis then create this special water along with different herbs and stuff to bring them into homeostasis this water just did that to you she's like can i buy this water from you <laughs> like you can have it, Patricia. It's on me, right? So, so <laughs> at this point, at this point, I'm really lighting up because you know I'm mainly a 3D guy at this point, and, and, and there's got to be some science, you know. For so, this was more science. This was real. I know this woman knew me from nothing. No reason for her to say any of this. And then, literally, the next day, a doctor Flynn calls me from the same office. Patricia and Dr. Flynn have a conversation. She tells him about the test that came out and he calls up and says, Hey, I'd like to talk to you about what you did, what you're doing with water. And uh, because Patricia shared with me what happened, can we have a meeting? And I, I said, sure. So we go in, I don't know, a few days later, we have a meeting. I go into his office and he, he's like, you see that device over there? I said, yeah, what is it? Some kind of a water filter? He said, yeah, it's a water filter, restructures water. And it's like a $4,000 unit. And he said, when I, when I muscle test or I douse, I get basically that unit charges water up to about a 60%, 100% being optimal, right? When I tested that water that you gave Patricia, it was like at a 7580, right, right around 7580. He says, you know, I don't know what you're doing, but you, you're, you're really, you're onto something unique and special. It, it, it is, you're, you're because he, he kind of wanted to get out of me what I was doing. And at this point, my guidance was just not talk too much about it at that point. You know, just wait till I figure out what's going on more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, this, this really took me down the rabbit hole. And next thing you know, because of grandmother following Lee's advice, <clears throat> 
I filed my first patent in 1999. And that was for the little hand unit that I call the Vortex Magnetic Energizer. You can see there's many different versions of it out there now, you know, but that did come through me. That originated, I still have the patent, it's expired. <clears throat> I'm not really much for patents to be honest with you, but I spent a lot of money and time and energy and a lot of it seemed to be a lot of waste, but nonetheless, it is what it is. I proceeded from this patent to file several other patents over the next years to come, all right? Because what, along this time, what happened was grandmother's falling leaves lit a real big fire under my butt. And she knew what she was doing, I think, to this day, and I look back. Um, she gave me an article from the Washington Free Press. And in this article, it had a research study that was done of how many carcinogens and toxins and chemicals were being dumped into our rivers, lakes, and streams. And it was in the millions of, of you know, ton. It was a lot, just US alone, just U United States alone. And Washington State, where I had had been living and lived most of my life, this it, we ranked number one out of all the states. And I think a big part of it was because of all of the chemical use and the processing of wood into paper and into paper products. Mm -hmm. And the, you know the fact of it is these big corporations were just getting their hands slapped too. You know they're getting hand slapped, and so this this was like this is when I was like, there's a big part of me I need to be a part of this solution. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 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 we need lots of people to be a part of the solution. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. We got enough problems to focus on. Forget about smoking problems, you know, just focus on solutions, right? <laughs> yeah. So how does what you're doing actually uh, restructure water? And what does restructuring water mean um, bring, to bringing it back to life, to making it viable again? Well, so one of the things that I believe that this happening with water, when we like, like our city water, when we put these chemicals, chlorine and fluoride and different salts and stuff that they put in our city waters, um, they, these chemicals surround the water molecule, right? So the water, it, it, it basically, the, the way, so the way I think the, the, the key to the first thing is, is looking at water as truly our very best friend, right? We need to look at water as our very best friend, really as our beloved, as the mother of all life that it is. The, it, it is the source of life, water. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it, it is the source of life. So when we, when we do these unconscious acts that we've been doing to water, by dumping chemicals into our rivers, lakes, and streams, by putting chemicals in our city water, you know, it's basically, it's, it's not allowing the water to, um, to do its job. It's not allowing the water that it was meant to be to do its job. And so we, the, the, you know, there's some people, you know, the science side of it, like Dr. Mushik John from Korea, Dr. Mushik John, um, you know, he discovered the, the, the basic when you just vortex and magnetize water, you take most water is randomly clumped like a clump of grapes. When we vortex and spin water, it creates uh, the breaks these clumps apart into what he called hexagonal water molecules. Right. And this could be scientifically shown how hexagonal water molecules and why do we want these type of a molecule of water in our body. Well, they're smaller. They're easier to assimilate into our cells, okay? Because when they're really randomly clumped, they don't have that ability to get through that oily, oily lipid substance of the cell membrane and getting into the cell. So that's, that's one thing. But another thing that happens is, is the covalent bond. The covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen. This plays a pretty important role on how much life force that water has. And I believe the other role that this plays is that 
So like mountain spring water coming off of a mountain, it's cold. It's receiving the subtle frequency sounds of the crickets, the birds, the uh, frogs, you know, all of these little subtle frequencies and energy, the, the water's picking up on it. The water's picking up on the galactic informational fields that are coming into that water, right? It's, it's, this is how water was meant to be. And we, we were meant to drink water this way, you know, from nature, from a mountain spring. This is, it's a big reason why we have forgotten who we are, in my opinion. Um, we have fallen to a lot of health problems as a human race. And it's sad to say, but this is a big, big reason. It goes to, we're not treating water by copying nature's way. We're not treating water with love and respect and honor. And so you can't expect that water to give it to you if you're not giving it to it, right? If you're not showing that appreciation. So the structuring water, another really big thing that we overlook, and that is gases in water. Gases in water. The gases are equally as important as the water. Right? Absolutely. Plasma is important. It's huge. <laughs> it's an important <laughs> aspect of our evolution. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, and, and so is hydrogen. So hydrogen is so, so critical. I mean, all gases come derived from hydrogen. We don't. So much of everything comes from hydrogen. I mean, we think that, that we're a carbon-based being. We're hydrogen-based beings. And we are in a hydrogen field with more hydrogen in the universe. We talk about being 97% water. We're also more than that of hydrogen because every aspect of those molecules binds with a hydrogen molecule to create another substance. And it's the same thing in the universe. We're devolving in our genetics because of the water that we're consuming because there is no life force. There is no charge to it. There's no spin. And, and this is how proteins are being formed in the body, which lead to the genetic structures, which lead to what stories get played out into our field. And so if we don't have these very uh, powerful charges, then we are stuck. This is another way we're stuck in patterns and programs of just repetition or at a very low frequential uh, sounding board. And so, I mean, <laughs> In order for us to evolve, water is such a big component to us creating more hydrogen that I believe is how we create a new type of helix, which is a triple helix. And I do this right now in, in courses using hydrogen, the communication of hydrogen. And so this is, this is a direct communication of every aspect of the water molecule through dimensions. And I mean, we're just, we're just now starting to understand that water can be programmed. <laughs> I mean, water, it's so far beyond that. I mean, this is a whole field of, of information that is multidimensional. And I love that you brought up primary water because this is how we go back to the primary source of, of the, the true essence of water that came to this planet. Water just, you know, water was not something that just was here. I believe that water, just like all beings, all genetics came to this planet, was seated on this planet and was part of a whole biosphere of communication for many different beings and species. We all created this together and water is a, as a super being that came here to be a part of, of this beautiful place that we call home, to be a part of that, to give us life. So yeah. amen, brother, to the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I think there's a, there's always a purpose and a reason for everything in life, you know, there is, right? This is earth school and we need to make mistakes so we can grow, you know, and, and learn. And that's, and we're doing that on a collective basis and on a individual basis. And so we will, we will wake up to this. I, I trust that we are going to wake up to this, but 
the, the, the problem, I think, a lot of times with, with the human race is that we don't understand nature. We don't really understand how nature works because we weren't taught. It's not our fault. It wasn't in our books. It- and we also can't because we're so devoid of electrical charge in between those spaces that connect us in the unified field for that knowledge. There, there's so much compartmentalization through our body, through our mind right now that, I mean, how can we know nature? Because nature is an intimate, multidimensional communication that's happening through the entire fabric of a body in, our, in all these different fields together. So anytime that there's a, a um, an, an aspect of, of compromise, of distortion, we, we can't understand nature. And this is such a call to going back to the basics and basics being water, number one, <laughs> air. <laughs> right. Right. Well, even just the two basic forces in nature that we haven't really understood, and those forces are centripetal, Okay, mm-hmm. the centripetal force, what is that? What's that represent? That, that represents the feminine. That represents um, contraction. That represents levitation, growth, purification. Okay, um, and more around quality, where we have the centrifugal energy, which is about expansion, heat, explosion it's the masculine leading to death and erosion so in a healthy forest we have roughly 35 percent erosion going on trees that have died feeding the feminine right so what was happened with us throughout this throughout time we go through these cycles and we've come to that cycle where it's been more of the masculine based um within ourselves because we've forgotten who we are really in my opinion we've forgotten this we are androgynous beings we are feminine we are masculine and this feminine energy has been really put down and and like bashed and and this patriarchal masculine predominant energy has been ruling going on and this is why 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 do you think we see so much death and erosion going on on the planet it's a reflection of what's going on in the human race. It's not no mistake about this. I know this to be true. And the masculine is also about quantity. It's not about quality. The masculine energy is more about quantity. Well, we're all about how much money can we get? How much can we get more of this and more of that and more knowledge and more of that? You know. So this is where we're at, but we're at this turning point now. Thank goodness we finally, we finally <laughs> opened the door to the turning point. <laughs> yay Uh, but but the more we wake up and realize this you have as much divine masculine as you even though you're in a divine feminine body the the key is to really embrace both your goddess divine feminine and your divine masculine side right the more we do this as a human race the more we understand this you'll see this world of death and erosion and decay fade out it will fade out and we will be flying around in crafts that don't pollute the air, right? We will, it's coming, I know it is. Especially the more we embody it, the more we become that consciousness, the more it will happen. Absolutely. So so this is what happens when we go into the ultimate ultimate dynamics of both the centripetal and the centrifugal. And that is the Taurus, right? And it, 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 when you create a, a hyperbolic egg shape and you create a toroid in water, it is the ultimate dynamics of both centripetal and centrifugal. It, you're creating a form of atomic energy. And the potential of what you can do with that is phenomenal. I mean, it really is. I won't go down that rabbit hole right now, but the potential when you understand water alchemy, really, and you understand the true language of water, that's the key. When we understand and really learn to listen to water, 
and really hear it and communicate with it, now you're really tapping into source energy. You're really tapping into speaking with source energy. And to me, that's, that's the ultimate when we can reach that place. Because all the, I feel the Akash, everything that's ever happened, it, it's in the water. It's in the water. The evolution of the whole entire planet doesn't evolve because we get smarter. <laughs> we think we get smarter, but it doesn't evolve that way. It, it, it evolves through consciousness and directly it evolves, in my opinion, through the element of water. So you like you pull a carrot out of the ground or an apple off of the tree and that water and that apple, you eat that, you take it into your body, you urinate it out, you perspire it out, and it's more evolved than what it was before that apple was here. When we die, our water goes back into the whole cycle, more evolved than what it was before we were here. This is, to me, the key, key role of evolution. And more particular, it relates around, again, the feminine side of water, hydrogen. The hydrogen is the key, key part of this. And um, that's, the, that's the beauty that I, I do see that, you know, we're waking up to this. We are. We are waking up. We're remembering these things. And so I just keep doing my best to hold the vision that we will continue to wake up. You know, this is what we do for one another. Um, we help one or two to remember. And that's what that water was doing in that bathtub when I was talking earlier. See, that little bit of water in that bottle was helping the other water remember its true essence and state. And so it happens quite quickly, right? Most people, when I talk these kind of things, I say, try not to stay in your head. Try to move into your heart because a lot of what I'll share will not register with your, with your mind very well. But if you drop down into your heart and your solar plex, you'll hear it more, right? Absolutely. Yeah, people love spending time in nature and they think it's just because they're in a beautiful setting, but really their water is being brought back to the divine remembrance of the truth of who we are as nature in nature. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Randy, would you love to share some of your your um, technology so that people can actually see some of the the uh, vortexes that you've created and some of the centrifugal forces uh, that you created. I mean, I think some of the, the um, one of the technologies that you showed me, and I can't remember which one, had the, the water that was flowing down in a, in a particular angle. And I thought that was so fascinating. And I think that's such a fascinating thing to show people um, how intelligent this water is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to, definitely. So. Uh... Did you screen share with me? Yep, you should have screen sharing capabilities. Okay. So this is um, this is one of the pieces that that I call uh, Gaia's fountain that came through me. So. I basically want to, I want to share that, you know, this technology did not, uh, it didn't come from me. Uh, this technology came through me and it is fifth dimensional heart-based technology. It's fifth dimensional heart-based technology. So I, I have come to realize, you know, over the many years when you use certain sound frequencies, light spectrums, um, there, there's an amazing, amazing thing that, that takes place, uh, when you're basically treating water with love and respect. And my vision is actually, uh, my vision is these, these Gaia's fountains become available to everybody everywhere. Meaning you go into an airport and you have your water jug that you pack around, no more bottled water. This is the only way we can get out of the world of bottled water. The only way I've come to the conclusion of getting out of bottled water and into a world of where we're all drinking this full spectrum water, water that helps you to remember who you are. 
because that is what water does for us when we start treating it with love and respect. So what, what you're seeing here is, um, let me see if I can get a little better image of one. Um, what you're seeing is this, is this is a centripetal interwinding vortex. And as you can see, these bends, you see this bend, this Kundalini snake that you're seeing here? Well, this is, this shape of this is based on what is known as a hyperbolic cone. It's a mathematical formula. And the more you get this accurate, the more you see this Kundalini thing happen. And what you also find is that it pulsates. I've been observing these for like 22 years now. So, I mean, this is, this is something that's been, when you watch, this is a zero point right here, right where the water comes out of this tip is where the water goes from centripetal to centrifugal, from the feminine to the masculine. Now the energy you don't see is levitating and going back up. You, you see this coming down, but what you don't see, the real power of this is actually going out into the whole area and it, it goes up. It's creating this feminine levitational energy purification. It's purifying the air. When you run a meter around one of these, a negative ion air meter, you find the negative ions go off the charts. These things create a huge amount of, of negative ions. So another thing, what happens is a pulsating effect. This spray right here, when you get the water level to the right point, like in Gaia's fountains, where I notice it the more, you get the water level right up here to the right point, and it literally, you can see it, it pulsates. It goes, shh, shh, shh. Well, what you're, you're tapping into the pulsation of the cosmos. Everything is pulsating, okay? And another thing this is doing, you're tapping into what is known as the Ottomantine particles. Jesus referred this to a woman named Glinda Green. And I highly recommend this. I realize now I used to call this plasma and it is a form of plasma that this is harnessing and literally drawing in like a black hole. Because when you get under, um, when you go into a place where you're standing um, underneath of this, um, and you can actually see this in, you know, you can see this a little bit in slow motion. So this is, a, this is what I call the plasma purification portal. And when you get underneath of this, what is happening is it is acting as a scalar wave antenna. It's a, it's a scalar wave antenna, and it is a scalar wave also transmitter. I, I have, you know, Grandmother following these is the one who kind of gave me the clue years ago, but it took me a while to finally really, really grasp, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Because, you know, I've just been following guidance. So you see I'm pulsing. You see that pulsing of that light at the zero point? That is an ideal, ideal way of the art of putting informational fields, frequencies into water. It, the water is wide open. It's like, give me what you want to give me. And so what's another thing that's happening? Well, 15 people over 20 years, about 15 people have told me when I've been at different healing events and expos, they have told me the same thing. They told me they can see the energy of this going out around a mile to a mile and a half. And I'm kind of like scratching my head. Wow, a mile, a mile and a half. But over 15 years, they, they said basically pretty much the same thing. It's going, the energy is going way down into the planet. It's going way, way up in the, in the sky. And it didn't take long for me to actually come to a realization that what these people were telling me were, were, were accurate. They were accurate. And the reason I say this, 
when they spray chemtrails, when they spray chemtrails over where I live, my Gaius fountain has a taste of metal in it, right? And it, because what it's doing is it's literally cleaning the entire airspace all above me. It's taking in, the, the metal taste will go away after a few days, the metal taste goes away, it transmutes it, but this is what's happening. And I also feel we have overlooked something really important. And that is we live, basically we have an atmosphere of almost like the Pacific Ocean of water in our atmosphere, okay? The geometry or the structure of this water vapor actually is quite important. And something else we've way overlooked. Why is this, why is it important? Again, why are they spraying all these fine metal particles in our atmosphere and have been doing it 25, 30 years, right? Why is this going on? Well, I'm not gonna go into my thesis. We'll just leave, go, we won't go down that rabbit hole, but <laughs> my feeling is it also has to do with the vapor of water that you and I breathe and every other, every other living thing on the planet is breathing. It, it, it goes into, uh, yeah, it, it goes into quite a lot. So when we like this, I call this a plasma purification portal. And, and because it is what it is doing is pulling in cosmic consciousness. Rudolf Steiner said this years ago. Rudolf Steiner said, when you create a deep crater vortex in water, you pull in the super sensible energies of the cosmos. And he is exactly right. It's just that I call it Christ consciousness or cosmic consciousness, right? And so because uh, we have, there's been something that's happened to the human race that has blocked us to receive direct communication to the star system we came from. Because none of us came from here. None of us are from here. We've been here a long time, so we think this is home, but this really is not home. And, and because we don't really remember who we are, we don't re really remember home, there's been a reason. Something has happened to us and it blocked the core channel that happens, this energy that runs from, from our star system, from the, the cosmos, from all of existence, it runs and it runs directly through us. And if we, that was going on where every one of us we would remember that we are creator god goddesses we are powerful magical amazing beings beyond measure right so what i found from personal experience the more time i spend under one of these the more i remember who i am mm -hmm. the more i step into waking up and knowing who i really am is this some fix all, cure all, heal all? No, I'm not saying that at all. No. But what it's doing is something that's very important. And that is helping me to remember who I really am, right? That's why these things are being able to come through me. I mean, I, I, you know, <laughs> commercial fishermen, you know, build stuff like this, commercial fishermen all my life, you know, so, so you know, you have to really, you know, even ask yourself, well, no, I'm much more than that. And so are you. And so are everybody else listening to this call. And, it, it, you know, the, <clears throat> the key, I think, part of this is, is that we, um, most of us have got some form of uh, a, an addiction issue. I deal with addiction all my life. <clears throat> so what happens when we're stuck on this gerbil wheel of addiction, um, we kind of just we just kind of keep going on the gerbil wheel. We want our lives to change, but we're not willing to change our lives. We're caught up on our addictions, whatever it may be. It could be addiction of just complaining, whatever. Addiction of sex, drugs, whatever. But when we can get off of that gerbil wheel of addiction, we move into the world of invention. This is something that I know from experience happens to us. When you're willing to do the work and you're willing to move into the world of invention and get out of your addiction, then the 
genius side of you comes out. The genius aspect of you and every one of us are. So this is a hydroponic system. This is a dual vortex right here where the little um, guy is there, my buddy. So I built this 20 years ago uh, out of fiberglass and I'm, I'm practicing. This was my first year of learning the art of, of, of imprinting informational fields, frequencies into the water and gases like hydrogen, oxygen, and the power of literally the power of, of using these informational fields, frequencies through light, gases, and we go to another level where I'm actually becoming more and more of an advocate of what's known as resonance alchemy. And that is a ancient, ancient language of Kumvita. It is very connected to Pleiadians, but it's also, it's, it's, it's galactic. It's not just Pleiadian. And I have been drawn, just really guided over the last year. I was drawn into resonance alchemy from Catherine Parker's work years ago, but really got into it this last year. So when you understand the alchemy of how to put these, these certain informational fields, because they're a scalar wave, that's what these, these, these um, resonance alchemy is, they're syllables, and you recite them, but they're a scalar wave. So I'll quit rambling on because I'm going down, you know, all these different places, and I'm sorry. No, but... that, that actually was going to be my next question. Um, was to ask you about the water healing work that you're doing with communities of people and where these um, syllables came from, these sound syllables came from. So, um, I mean, because this is, I th feel that this is what we, what we are coming together to do in communities of people to work with intention and to work with sound as scalar waves in order to change the harmonics of dead water of, of polluted water, of overfished water, and to bring it back to its vitality so that we can come back to our vitality and have charged water again. So, yeah. Yes, so, so <clears throat> what, I, what I'd like to share, and that is, <clears throat> so just over this last winter, <clears throat> my guidance clearly, I got a really, really strong message from the Earth Mother. And she was like, Randy, you need to purify yourself like you've never done before. You need to do this for me. If you really love me and care about me, and she knows I do. She's like my greatest lover. I mean, the divine mother. And so <laughs> there is no other. Anyways, so I said, okay. She's like, Randy, you need to really purify yourself like never before. Practice self-love like never before. And, and please, because I need you to do this. I really need you to do this. So, so I started asking guys, well, you know, what do you want me to do? And she's like, well, fasting, you know, fasting, you know, uh, letting change your upgrade, your diet, even better than what you have been, you know, all of these things are super, super important. And so I, I started doing all this and also clearly guided every day. You need to go out in that water portal and be under that vortex, like 40 minutes every day so what started happening to me around december was i started receiving massive downloads and ideas so you know i started all this 22 years ago mainly because i wanted to support the waterways of the planet and i i went down a rabbit hole of making these products for people because my guides was if you don't help support shifting consciousness, you can put these systems all, all over rivers, lakes, and streams that you're creating, but you, you got to help shift consciousness of the internal race. And, and so I'm like, wow, okay. So I had, I was doing both, but this last winter I started bilocating. I started literally bilocating in that portal and I'm not going to go into depth of what I was guided to do, other than I started bilocating me in the portal in different locations through the planet, around the planet. And I, I, what from the beginning I couldn't, I wasn't fully, I was being guided to do that, and then recite the syllables, recite Catherine Parker's residence alchemy syllables. 
Then one day I got a very clear message. Okay, Randy, you need to call all people you've met over the last 22 years that you feel are fairly high frequency, high conscious beings, and you need to bring them together in a Zoom meeting. And you need to, and you need to literally visualize, you know, get, get like a Zoom, uh, Google Earth Zoom photograph of that ocean, of that river, of that whole area, and everybody focus their light and love, call in the deities, because there is many deities I've been working with for many years. And they are, for me, very, very important part of all of this too, all right? And I won't go into all of them, but Sanat Kumara and Lord Maitreya and Babaji, Mother Mary, Mother Teresa, Kuan Yin, Lady Nada, Lord Sananda, uh, there's, there's a whole, whole, whole variety of them. And I won't go into all of them because it's not necessary, but I have been calling in them for years and years and years. And my guides were, call them in. All your star brothers and sisters, all these beings. And so this is what has happened to me just in this last uh, few months, what I've been working on for 22 years to solve the riddle, literally. And I kept thinking, oh, when my, my, my vibrant vital water prop for profit business finally makes profit, because <laughs> it's never really made much profit, when it finally gets these products and production scale and makes the money, I can then have the money to produce these things and give them, give them put them in ponds and rivers and lakes and streams and, and go out and clean up the mess. And I started Project Clean Oceans, a nonprofit, like five years ago, mainly focused on getting the plastics out of the ocean. So, and, and I've never been successful. I felt like a failure. I have to be honest completely. I felt like a failure that I've worked this hard at this for 22 years. And it has been um, pretty hard on my soul, really. And yet, I finally realized it doesn't have to be this hard. It doesn't have to be this way. Mm. We are magical, powerful beings. Yes. And, and using that childhood imagination and coming from the heart with expecting nothing in return. Um, and actually also by locating technologies. I can by locate these technologies to these places. I don't got to go put them there. Right. Yeah, it's not a physical to physical thing. It's a it's a conscious metaphysical, <laughs> more <laughs> dimensional. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and the great thing is, is that energy, so, you know, source wants to play. And when we come come at our creations with with the utmost love and respect and liberation for all beings energy wants to play and it pours right in because it, 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 it wants yeah. to be witnessed it wants to be witnessed mm -hmm. yes yes it does and still maintain its freedom at the same time right exactly <laughs> that's exactly right that's it. <laughs> exactly it's <laughs> it's so so anyways, uh, it, it's been, I have to say, you know, it's been so rewarding this last few months, so rewarding to, to know this and, and just to know it's done. It, it, you know, what I bring through is from the future, right? Absolutely. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's ancient too. We used to use something similar in Atlanta. We did, but, but a lot of what comes through me and others too, I know this, we, we come, we, we, we bring it in from the future, right? Mm -hmm. So it, we're completely different beings. We're not those beings of 26,000 years ago. Right. We are completely different beings and, and we are in charge of our own evolutionary process and our own consciousness, which is the, the, the spark of all the evolutionary process. So, right. it, you know, it's, it's important for us to be the creative part, to be the pure creative part of the divine nature. And that has no no past involved with it. It is a, it's a pure, clean slate of how would you like it to be right now? Yes. <laughs> exactly right. That's <laughs> exactly right. And, and, you know, and the beautiful thing is I've always had spirit divinely guiding me. For instance, about a year and a half ago, 
a woman, Carol Fitzpatrick, on a Zoom meeting, she, she offered everybody a quick little channel because she, she's been channeling for years. Like, this is a gift, a little quick little two, three minute channel. And when it came to my turn, she says, you're going to be bilocating technologies not too far down the road. And, and a year and a half ago, I'm just scratching my head. What is she talking about bilocating technologies? I'm like, by what? You know, I, I really did not have a clue. <laughs> so, so when this came through this winter, wow. And, you know, that's, that's the beauty of spirit. And then five years ago, after I had spent all this time and energy on Project Clean Oceans and the whole business plan of how to get all this plastic out of the ocean, because I worked on the most advanced, sophisticated fishing operations that ever existed, right? And I was a part of the problem. I mean, I was, I was a part of the problem. <laughs> I mean, yes, we're helping to feed the human race, but I was a part of the, the pollution problem. And so that's why I quit that, you know, career years and years ago. And anyways, but, but my girlfriend at the time, Joanna says, I'm all excited. I finally got the website done. And I've got all the bank account, all the nonprofit stuff done. And I tell her about, you know, how we're, I'm going to be catching the garbage. We're going to process it right on the ships, building, building materials. And, <clears throat> and she says to me, no, I don't think that's how you're doing it. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean that's not how I'm doing it? It was like a jab to my ego. It's like, <laughs> what do you mean? I just been working hard on this, getting this done. That's not how I'm going to be doing it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Randy, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly how you're going to do it, but I see, I can see you're going to figure out a much simpler way. Mm -hmm. by locating technology over the place, yep. helping uh, unite with the consciousness that's at that level that can recognize uh, the power that you have, the power that we have together, and to be able to um, use our intentions as restructural devices for all of the water here on the planet, in our bodies and all the water here on our planet. So Randy, when, when are your technologies going to become available for sale for people? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> no, I, I have, you know, the first unit that I made 22 years ago, the VME. Um, I, I have that for sale now. I, I, I made another batch. I'm starting to make some different alchemy formulas, um, what I call a monatomic plasma gold solution which is really good for removing many things out of the body that uh, special methyl mercury, mm -hmm. monatomic gold. So, well, you got to be careful on which source you get it from. I'm a real believer in that, but I do feel the beings that are working with me, um, this monatomic gold that I'm making and the uh, monatomic platinum and uh, silver, and I'm making a few other things, but <clears throat> I feel actually it's coming fairly soon for the Gaia's fountains. I'm like, I think eight hundred thousand dollars in back orders on the Gaia's fountains. So it's just it's just a matter of the right conscious angel investor to show up. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what it's about. But I won't sell my soul. You could flap four million on the table right now, and if you're clearly not in alignment from coming from, how can we be of greatest service? To the well-being of the whole and for the company to grow and for your money to be returned yes yes and you make some investment but the objective must be the main intentions how can we be of greatest service to the well-being of all of life that needs healthy water to thrive that's i i won't sell my soul let somebody else you thank know. you for holding that integrity because that's the integrity that is then imprinted in the water instead of another uh, corporate type of greed mentality of self to service because we've had enough of that. <laughs> we have that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, awesome, Andy. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for this interview. I, I really, yeah, I'm really grateful and appreciate well, it. Thank you, Randy. You, you have done so, so much incredible work. And um, how can people, if people want to join your community that is healing the water right now, how would people go about doing that? Because um, I think that's, that's brilliant. I mean, I've been a part of that. Uh, and I've been a, on a few calls with you. And right. I mean, it's just brilliant. And the more people that experience it, the larger our consciousness is and to create the, uh, the right. imprinting of water. Right. And, and just, yeah, just to be clear too, like when it comes to the plastic, we are, um, 
we are alchemizing the plastic, right? We're not using the vortex by locating. We're literally alchemizing, turning that plastic into another form of like carbon, right? Because we have this ability, we can alchemize stuff. Absolutely. And, 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 and some of the other stuff that's going on is connecting with the consciousness of the methyl mercury. And, and, and yeah, so I won't go into depth, but there's a multiple ways that, that I'm being guided to do this. And it is a we thing. I'm just setting up, I've set up the stage for the magic to happen, right? Uh, I'm a part of the magic act and I actually call our, the team, the uh, plasma creatrix marvels. That is who we are. We do <laughs> get on our suits every meeting, have fun. It's not serious. It's not like we're coming from a place that it's all messed up and it's all, no, no, no. We're just, we're all about homeostasis. We're all about bringing it into homeostasis and sending our love. So the key to that is, is the simple, just email me. Uh, you know, my, my website is vibrantvitalwater.com and my, uh, my email is info at vibrantvitalwater.com. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Randy. I truly believe that you have something special and I want you to know that. And I, I support you wholeheartedly and we were, we're coming to visit you soon so that I can get underneath that portal. <laughs> yes. I mean, my whole body was buzzing as you were showing those pictures of, of, of the, your triad. My whole body was like, Whoa, yes, get me there. I need to be under that now. But even just from the pictures, my body was feeling the complete resonance of that, the, high, the the frequencies, the high frequencies of that. And my whole body is now like, wants to come and visit you immediately. <laughs> my cellular structures are already on their way. <laughs> so thank you so much for everything you do, Randy. Thank you for joining us. It has been such a pleasure and I wish you nothing but the very best um, to come your way and that these technologies be everywhere on this planet. Thank you, sister. Thank you very much. It's an honor.